Are you trying to learn SOLIDWORKS but you just don't know where to start? Or are you trying to become a certified SOLIDWORKS professional but you just can't find the right tutorials online? My name is Lucas and in this video series we're going to be going over everything you need to know to become a certified SOLIDWORKS professional and know the fundamentals about SOLIDWORKS. So let's just get into it. Once you open SOLIDWORKS, you're going to want to create your first part. You can do this by selecting the new file button and then clicking the part button in the pop-up menu. This will greet you with your user interface to make a SOLIDWORKS part. In the center is our 3D interface where we interact, interface, and create parts. In this area, we have our managers. The feature manager lets us store information about our parts and our 3D environment while the property manager allows us to manage properties of different entities. Again, this will make more sense in just a few minutes. On the top, we have different tabs, which store buttons related to the tab's functionality. In the first few episodes, we will be focusing on the features and sketch tabs. To start our first part, we need a sketch. A sketch is a two-dimensional drawing on a flat 2D plane. We do this because our screens are two-dimensional, and it's the most intuitive way to interact with our screens, thus SOLIDWORKS, and make a three-dimensional part. Once the sketch is done, we can use a feature to turn the two-dimensional sketch into a three-dimensional part. To create a new sketch, go under the Sketch tab and select the Sketch button. When you first create a sketch in a new part, you'll be shown the three primary planes. You can choose the top, the front, or the right plane, but we're going to be using the top plane. Other than orientation, the planes are identical. After selecting the plane, our screen will rotate to look directly at it, or what is called normal to the plane. If you ever go off the plane accidentally, for example by rotating the screen by clicking and holding the center mouse button and moving the mouse, you can either select the normal 2 button or click the spacebar and select the plane. A quick tip is to use Ctrl 8 to instantly go to the plane selected. Lastly, if you ever need to zoom in or out, simply scroll the center mouse wheel. Once a plane is selected, we enter sketch mode on the top plane. Sketch mode allows us to start making sketch entities, which are just the lines of our drawings. In this area, we can find all the entities we will need to make our first sketch. We can see things like lines, circles, arcs, rectangles, and more. For our sketch, we will select the rectangle. This will bring up the property manager for rectangles. This allows us to select different types of rectangles which only vary by what points of the rectangle we use to create them. For example, the corner rectangle is created by selecting the two outside corners of the rectangle. This is illustrated in the corner rectangle drawing, as the first point selected, number 1, defines one outside point, while the second point defines the other corner. We will use a center rectangle which is made by first selecting the center of the rectangle and then an outside corner. Once I bring my mouse to the center of the drawing, or origin, an orange point will become highlighted along with a yellow square appearing to the bottom right of my mouse. This means that between the point highlighted in orange and the point I'm about to create, a relation will be added between the two, denoted by the relation shown in the yellow square. Relations are just things that define one or multiple entities in a way that cannot be represented by a number or dimension. For example, a single line can be given a vertical relation. Two circles can be coincentric to each other, which means they share the same center point, and many other relations which we will cover in this and future episodes. In this case, the relation shown is called coincident, which means the two points will be joined together. Now I can click to create the point, and then drag my mouse to an arbitrary place and click to finish the rectangle. We can see that once the rectangle is finished, we are still in the rectangle property manager, which means that if we try to click another place in our interface, another rectangle will be created. We can exit the property manager by selecting the green check mark or more simply by pressing the escape button on our keyboard. I would recommend to always have your hand in that area as when exiting out of menus in SOLIDWORKS, the escape button can be very useful due to its speed. The rectangle is a blue sketch color, which means it's underdefined. This means that when I click and drag the rectangle, it moves with my mouse. Thus, the dimensions of the rectangle are not defined. This is not good. If we want a rectangle to be 4 by 3 inches, we want it to be exact. We can define dimensions by using the Smart Dimension tool. This tool takes entities we select and comes up with the most intuitive dimension type based on the entities we have selected and the location of our mouse. For example, if we select the two opposing corners of a rectangle, the 
depending on where we place our mouse on the screen, we can create a horizontal, a vertical, or an angled dimension. However, we just want to define the horizontal and vertical dimensions of a rectangle. If you click entities you do not want to give a dimension to, you can press escape to deselect the most recent selected point. Since we have selected two points, I will press escape twice. After this, the smart dimension tool is still highlighted, meaning I do not have to select it again to make another dimension. If I want to exit smart dimension, I can click the button or press escape. Much like how we can select two points, we can also select a line. I will select the top line and give it a 5 inch dimension, and then I will click the line on the right and give it a 4 inch dimension. Now, if I try to drag the rectangle around, it will not move. We can verify that it's defined as all the lines are now black. As well, in the bottom right corner we can see the whole sketch is fully defined. It should be noted, the center point coincident relation to the origin we made at the start is keeping the rectangle defined as well, as the origin, by extension, the center point of the rectangle cannot move. If I were to make the center of this rectangle in an arbitrary place on the interface, and made the top and right dimensions I had, it would still not be fully defined, as the size of the rectangle is defined, but the location would not be. Now that we have a simple sketch created, we can turn this into a simple three-dimensional part so that you can start to understand the process of using features to make sketches into parts. While we are still in the sketch, we can go to the Features tab and select the Extruded Boss slash Base feature. This is the most simple feature, as it will give a thickness to the sketch we created. I will select Blind, which is just to give a thickness of a certain dimension, and assign a 2-inch dimension. Once we collect the green check, we have now created our first part as a simple box. We can take a better look by clicking and holding the center mouse button and moving our mouse to rotate to view our box. We can see in the feature manager tree our first feature. We can edit it by right clicking and selecting the edit feature button which brings up the feature property manager. And we can edit the sketch we made by clicking the drop down button, right clicking the sketch and clicking edit sketch. Since this episode is primarily about sketches, we will be going a bit more into sketches this episode and talking a bit more about features in the next. Once we are back in the sketch, we can press Ctrl 8 to go normal to the sketch and start covering more sketch entities and sketch tools. One thing I have not mentioned is construction geometry. These appear as dashed lines, which we can see connect the corners of our center point rectangle. These are very useful as construction geometry are not seen by features when you're starting to make them. Thus, they can be used to arrange and orientate sketch entities that you need for a feature. You can turn any sketch entity, whether it's a line or an arc, into a construction geometry by clicking the entity and selecting the construction geometry checkbox. Next is the offset entities. This simply creates entities that are offset from a base geometry. We can select the tool and select our four lines, then say that we want the offset to be one inch, and it will create a larger rectangle, one inch offset on each side. Now let's say I want an arc spanning from the left to the right line going over the top of the outside rectangle. I can create an arc using the tangent arc entity and select the two lines. The tangent arc makes an arc which both endpoints are tangent, or what is called smooth, to the connecting entity. However, after I make this arc, there is an issue. The line in between makes the sketch not a single area, meaning when we go to extrude it, there will be what are called multiple contours. This is not inherently an issue, but it's something that should be avoided, and that we can simply avoid by right-clicking the line and selecting delete. The, the tangent arc is already defined, as the two lines that it is connected to are defined as well. Now let's say I want another arc on the bottom of the rectangle, but I do not want it to span the whole distance. I only want it to be one inch long. I can select the center point arc and select the bottom line, as well as two points on the line to complete the arc. Again, there would be an issue with multiple contours, while this time I cannot simply delete the bottom line. I can use the trim entities tool to get rid of the small segment I do not want. I will drag my mouse through it, completing the shape I wanted, and now I can give a vertical relation between the origin and the center of the arc. As well, I can give it a 1 inch dimension to finish defining the sketch. I can exit the sketch to see that the feature will update, or what is called a rebuild, from the new sketch we have created. Although what we have created here today is not useful in a real world application, you've been able to take away the fundamentals of what goes into a SOLIDWORKS sketch and part. If you like the video, make sure to like it. If you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe. 
In the next episode, we're going to be covering more about features and a little bit more in depth into the geometry you might see on the CSWP test. So, I'll see you in that video.